listen, I didn't exactly predict this, but I repeatedly brought up to Dave the possibility of Sheamus as the top heel. He could not wrap his mind around this. And listen, I don't blame him. Because I made the jokes myself when these low raw ratings came in. I said, you know what this company needs right now? At this time of historic low raw ratings. You know what this company needs? They need Sheamus as the champion. Well, that's what they've given us. And it feels to me like this will make me money. Because we often get a rush of sign-ups whenever the company does something really stupid. And I feel that this was a pretty stupid move. It's I, up there. I know that people don't like Roman Reigns. I know that he's booed all the time. But man, it's like they're saying, oh, you don't want Roman Reigns? All right, fine. We'll give you Sheamus. As if to say, fuck you. Here's what you'll get, you complainers. We're going to give you Sheamus as the top heel. Sheamus and Roman Reigns is likely the main event of TLC. Sheamus versus Roman Reigns is likely a main event at Royal Rumble. For all I know, Sheamus may be the champion through Mania. We'll see. I, I kind of don't expect him to last past Royal Rumble. But nothing obvious sticks out as a better idea. Nothing obvious. Roman Reigns is champion. I guess. They could have had Roman Reigns. He, here's what I thought they should well, do. Well, you know, that's the stupid thing I said. There's a lot obvious of success. Everything. That's a better idea. Everything is better than Sheamus as champion. The, the, yeah. Kevin Owens would be better as I, champion. I don't know if there's a good idea, but there are there are many better ideas. Del Rio would be better as champion. Yeah. Dean Ambrose would be better as champion. Yeah. Roman Reigns would be better as champion. Yeah. Instead, we've got Sheamus. You know what this means? There's going to be a 20-minute boring promo with Sheamus on every Raw. Yeah. Sheamus will likely be in the main event of every Raw. Yeah. Sheamus is going to be all over Raw. Yeah. This is their bright idea. Here's what I thought. I thought, you know what? Why would you have Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose be the finals of this tournament? How many never-before-seen matches with top guys can you name in this company? Exactly. It's a short list. I can name one, and that is Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. And I thought, you know what? If you're going to do this match... Why would you give it away at Survivor Series in a tournament final? Because you can't even advertise it. Right. You can tease to people that it may happen, but nobody knows for sure. If you're going to have a match like that, why don't you promote it? Why don't you shoot an angle? Why don't you build it up? Why don't you have it main event a Royal Rumble or a WrestleMania? Why would you give it away for free? How about you have Roman Reigns and Kevin Owen in the finals, and Roman Reigns wins, but then Kevin Owens attacks him or whatever, and you could have Roman Reigns feuding with Kevin Owens. You're forgetting something, though. Dean Ambrose is skinny. Can't do that. Dean Ambrose? Yeah. Where are you at? I said Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens in the finals. Oh, I misunderstood. Yes. Yeah. Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens in the finals. And hey, Owens is fat. Hey, you know what else you could have done? You could have had Sheamus cash in after the match, and Roman Reigns beats Sheamus. Yeah. So now Roman is a dominating champion, and then some heel comes out and attacks him, and Roman feuds with somebody else as the champion. You save the Dean Ambrose match. Dean Ambrose wins the Royal Rumble. And then you build up Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns for the title at WrestleMania. There's a million things they could have done. And listen... Did they pay that match off tonight in a seven-minute world title match between Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns? That was not an all-time classic. Hell no! They gave more time to Charlotte and Paige yeah. than they did Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns in the main event. So, they gave it away. They gave away the one match that they had that's anything special. They gave it away. It was seven minutes long with a clean finish. Now, who gives a fuck about that match anymore? I don't know. And Sheamus is your fucking champion! Yeah. All right, let's start at the beginning. Show opened with Lillian Garcia singing the national anthem. A fine job, even by her own lofty standards. A long Undertaker video package showing him tombstoning hundreds of men, including Bray Wyatt. That made me laugh. So they showed the Wyatts beating up Taker and Kane. They did not show Taker and Kane beating up all four men by themselves. No, maybe they realized that was bad booking. It was dumb. 
And there's another one. What a payoff we got to that tonight. It legit was Undertaker and Kane versus two Wyatts, uh-huh. and in a fair fight, they beat them. Yeah. Wow. Glad I sat through all those angles. <laughs> and they profile the four men left in the tournament. Opener was Roman versus Del Rio in the tournament, tournament semifinal. Fan held up a Diet Owens Diet sign. I laughed. Roman came out, got a shiny new vest. He was round, roundly booed. Zeb cut an inset promo, basically saying Del Rio would win. They had a really good match. Not a great match, but uh, a, a good pay-per-view match, good pay-per-view opener. Am I wrong, or have they never chanted, let's go Roman, Roman sucks? Was this the first time? Uh, it might have been. There's certain He's always had his detractors and his supporters. He's but- always had people booing him. Mm-hmm. But this was the first time that I can remember hearing, let's go Roman, Roman sucks. And as soon as I heard it, I thought, I can't believe they didn't do this earlier. Do what earlier? This chant. Ah, okay, well, there you go. Yeah, he he essentially is the new John Cena now. <laughs> Apparently they're just going to run with it. He's, Except he can't win. He can't that succeed. Is a, that is a key difference. <laughs> that is a big difference. That is Man, a key why isn't this guy as over as John Cena? Uh, one guy always succeeds. One guy always fails. I can't figure it out. So Del Rio tried the foot stomp in the ropes, but he missed it, and hopefully that puts that move to bed forever. His knee buckled after he missed this move. He collapsed in, the, in a heap in the ring, and Roman prepped for the spear, but Del Rio was down for a long time. And they you thinking, oh, man, he really blew out his knee or something here. He's down forever. And after, like, a good minute, he fights his, to his feet on one leg, and Roman comes charging out with a spear, but Del Rio is playing possum and hits a super kick for an earfall. That was great. That was great. He tried the rolling arm bar, but Roman turned it into the uh, Bob Backlund lift and the power bomb for the near fall. And he got the arm bar again. Roman was able to drag him to the ropes to break it. And he dodged something off the top and came off the ropes with a spear for the win. A good pay-per-view opener. It was a good match. Roman goes to the finals. I warned Roman not to go to the top rope in this match. Roman or Del Rio? Roman. Oh. Yeah. The, oh, because, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you tonight? No, the, the, the finish was Del Rio coming off the top of being speared. Yes, but... So he shouldn't have gone to the top well, either. We've talked about this many times. If you're Del Rio's opponent, don't go up to the top rope. Yes. I even had people on Twitter tweeting him to alert him to this, and he ignored everyone to his own detriment. Luckily, he escaped it. I was going to say, it worked out great for him. Kind of. Maybe. Oh, so he scouted the escape. It was, but it he was, was stupid enough to get caught in the hole in the first place. Well, it was a. It, it was a the, the foot stomp. Yeah. Did he actually get foot stomp this match? No, he got out of exactly. it. exactly. But he was he, stupid enough to almost get caught in no, it. No, he was smart enough to set a trap for Del Rio. He <laughs> said, sound? "I will get hung in the ropes." When he goes to the foot stomp, I'll dodge and he'll land in the ring and buckle his knee. Huh? Yeah. But then Del Rio was smarter than him. He needs a new coach. The more I talk about this, the more I, I like. I'm talking myself into liking it. He needs a new coach. They were setting traps for each other constantly. Whew, got more out of this match than I did. I, I, I didn't get this much out of it until right now. A few minutes went by. JoJo's interviewing Roman backstage. JoJo is still employed. Sure. Sure, you say. I know. She is no good at anything she does. She's much better than Devin. God bless her. No, she's not. Devin had a personality to her. JoJo is a pretty robot. Wow, all right. I don't even know how to respond to that. In comparison... Yes. So Dean showed up before she could even finish her question. Dean shows up. He congratulates him on his win. And they agreed they would fight tonight and they'd still be friends later. So he leaves. And by the way, when these two had to do their deal, this was the, it was almost like they had to have done it on purpose, where they turned both of their bodies completely towards the camera and they craned their necks so hard to each side to look at each other that I thought that they would both suffer some sort of neck trauma. So Dean leaves. Rowan turns back to Jojo. Jojo smiles at Roman. She still hasn't asked, asked a question, by the way. No, she did earlier. She, but she then started Dean to, up. but Dean interrupted. Yeah. She never finished. So she smiles at Roman. Roman smiles back at her. Time passes. Seasons change. We all get a little older. Eventually, Kevin Owens shows up, but these two 
dipshits were left smiling at each other like idiots for a good 10 seconds. Well, Roman was waiting for her to ask a question. I guess. That's right. I remember. Yeah, there was more detail. But. T there was so much time in between. He started to make up an answer to a question she had not asked. Yeah. Yes. This had to be live. <laughs> uh, of course it was. But you know what? Devin would have at least asked the question. JoJo did not know enough to ask a question. Dev, Devin doesn't know enough to say, Roman, Rain, what, Roman Reigns, what are your thoughts? So Owens walks up and says, I'm going to stop you. I beat John Cena. I won this IC belt. And this is the Kevin Owens show. And everyone cheered. An amazing segment. Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens in the other tournament semifinal. Stop goddamn pointless camera zooms. It ruins everything. Don't even get me started on the things that I got pissed off at about this. I'll get into them. Don't worry. There's so many reasons this is just bad Can TV. we talk about Soul Survivor that I had to hear twice tonight for matches where multiple men survived? Yes. <laughs> yes, they're fucking Why idiots. Why is this so hard? Because they're stupid. Soul means the only one. Uno. And then I brought this up on Twitter, and one guy said... Well, Brian, maybe they're talking about the bottom of a shoe. I hope you blocked him. And then someone else said, maybe they're talking about their soul. I hope you blocked him, too. Why do they do this? Soul survivor. I don't know. I don't even I don't care. They had a really good match. There's a point where Owens had him a chin lock and cried out, Chin Lock City. And I realize Kevin Owens has about 60 t-shirts right now, but if they come out with a Kevin Owens Chinlock City t-shirt, there is at least a 50% chance I will buy one. Chinlock City, baby. That'd be different. Just Chinlock City. Why? I don't know. I'm going to get that for my child. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> I produced a Chinlock City, baby. That's what Bothell is. Chinlock City. That's actually when you put it that way. That, She's a Chinlock City, baby. That makes some sense. Owens hit a gut buster and missed a big fat moonsault. Had a long, long, long battle for a superplex until Owens hit a top rope fisherman buster for a near fall. He tried the pop up power bomb, but Ambrose hit the seesaw Larry in a tope. Tried another tope, but Owens caught him and F fived him onto the announce desk. They didn't call it that, but that's what it was. Went back in the ring at a long series of big moves and counters, and Ambrose was able to avoid the pop up power bomb twice and hit the dirty deeds for the win. And the thing about these two matches, both of them, that I liked was that. They avoided big moves rather than take the big moves and they kick out of everything. They've been doing that a lot lately. And I good. They do it more. Backed up, and so they're now only doing that in big title matches, like which, the big title match at the end of the show. At the end of the show, yes. But. Which actually, great in theory, but when you're goddamn main event seven minutes, you shouldn't be kicking out of finishers. Yeah. So this meant it was Roman and Dean in the finals. Did you? Yes, I did see the Roman Reigns TLC commercial. The video game? You know. Eight bit video game? Yes. I would buy this game. I would take Roman Reigns and have him punch random luchadors in the face and dodge Kane's fire and Big Show's giant punch out of the sky. That sounds fun. That sounds more fun than the TLC pay per view. Undertaker hype video with lots of clips from the Legend Show talking about him. A random Survivor Series match that is even more random in hindsight. Man, you should have seen the pre-show Survivor Series match. I can't even remember who was in it, but it was all geeks. Bo Dallas, yeah. Stardust. Goldust, in his big return. Hey, dude, Goldust apparently got the biggest pop, not of the night, but at least up to that point. People and went the first match, you say. crazy for Goldust. No, more so than anyone else in the entire match. He was the big star. And you he was a why? bigger star than Bo? Yeah. Oh. And you want to know why? He's been off television. Well, yeah. Because when you're on television, you're not over. And when you're not on television and you come back, you're over because you haven't been on this shitty television. Think about that. Anyway, this random one was Ryback and the Lucha Dragons and the Usos versus the New Day and Sheamus and Wade Barrett. Let me talk about this match. There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, you could talk about the New Day deal. Then I'll talk about what Sent me over the edge on this show. I don't know if they sent me over the edge. Just, it's so weird. No, I'll tell you what sent me over the edge. So the New Day come out, and they're doing their usual wacky promo, running down the crowd, talking about how great they are. And Wade and Sheamus are at their sides. 
And their music is playing as they're speaking. And Seamus is clutching the briefcase, and he is bobbing his head, and he's tapping his feet, and he is getting down to the New Day's music. This was the coolest Seamus has ever been. They finish their, they're, they're wrapping up their promo. They're talking about Xavier's wacky new hairdo. A huge pompadour flowing down the back of his head. And at the very end, Seamus grabs the mic and declares, and this is a quote, it's time to get jiggy on these posers. Seamus said this approximately 90 minutes before being the top guy in the company. Yeah. It's time to get jiggy on these posers. And they knew it was lame because the New Day stared at him like he was the dorky white guy. Which and they, he was. Which he was. And they took the mic back and they said New Day rocks and the match started. But why? Hey, it gets even better. Why? If you, I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that at this point they knew how the show would end. And that wasn't a last minute decision made during the final minutes of the pay-per-view. If you know he's going to be the top guy within 90 minutes, why do you make him look like a geek? Because the... that's what they do. And you know what? When he said this... I'm turning... <sighs> when they said this, when he made his comment, not only did the New Day stop and everybody looked at him like he was a dork, they stopped his music as well. Yeah, they stopped the New Day music. It was all, they <laughs> should have like put, put, in, put in the record scratch. Yep. Even though no one has records in 2015. That's right. Hey, it gets better. So, Sheamus wins the title at the end. He's aligned with Triple H. And he's now the top heel. So, knowing that going in, I want to know who put this match together so I can publicly call them out as the goddamn worst agent of at least the week, maybe the month, perhaps the year. They do a bunch of things. Xavier pins Jimmy Uso, which is actually notable because Xavier pinned somebody. Biggie kills Sin Cara. Sheamus blind tags in, hits the brogue kick. Sheamus and Biggie argument, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, eventually it comes down to Sheamus by himself against three men. May I rewind just a moment at that, at that point? The reason it was Sheamus by himself was because Biggie got pinned. I One of the new day, I think it was Xavier, had already been pinned, so there are technically two heels left. But then Kofi chose to walk out with the New Day and leave Seamus by himself. That's right. If you're going to walk out of the match, why did you bother walking out for the match? Well, it's a good question. But point is, they bailed on Seamus yeah. because they were mad at him for being a geeky white poser. Basically. Okay. So Seamus is left all by himself against three men. Now, the moment his teammates walked out on him, he should have been triple teamed and pinned. That's not what they did. No. They walk out on him, and he proceeds to beat up all three men. He beats up everybody. He beats up the Ryback. He beats up the Ryback. He beats up Callisto. Beats up Sin Cara. He's beating all of them up. And the Uso, whichever's out there. Uso, whatever. Mm. This leads to nobody caring one fucking bit about this match. It kills the match dead. It kills the baby faces dead. And finally, as he is fighting valiantly against three men, successfully, I might add. He's winning on them. Winning. Finally, they are able to successfully triple team and pin Sheamus, at which point the fans boo. Because Sheamus was booked as the baby face here valiantly fighting to win the match and he was fucked three on one and beaten you know when this show ended this this was the problem yeah this well, it was, was a problem. problem it was there were many problems when the show ended i thought well that was weird but i kind of had fun and now going back over this i realized what a dumb show this was well it was mostly this this was the one that, that set me off that was quite weird i mean my god if he would have if he would have beaten Roman Reigns and been babyface, fine. But he's not. He's the top heel. So they Ah fuck it. Why am I wasting my time? Next match. Charlotte versus Paige. Barely any mention of Reed Flair or anything like that. That's at least good. A quick a quick note about uh Paige had gone over the line on Monday night or something along those lines. 
So I think the agent who put that last match together may have put this one together as well. Because Paige got the shine. She beat up Charlotte forever in a fair fight. And then finally Charlotte cut her off. I have to figure four to stop the action. And she started slamming Paige's face in the apron because now you see Charlotte had the heat. And she then began to choke Charlotte or choke Paige. Charlotte was the heel here. It going against not only the whole point of this story from day one, but also in Atlanta. It wasn't even really that. They both just took turns beating each other up. It it, it turned into that. Yeah. But Paige beat up Charlotte. From the beginning, yeah. Charlotte beat up Paige. It was backwards in the beginning, and then it went from backwards to formless. Yeah. Went on for a while. Nobody cared. I don't know why they would. They did a spot where the idea was Paige was standing in the barricade and Charlotte would climb on the barricade to spear her off. And what happened was they both climbed up there and sort of fell down. And Charlotte hooked the figure eight and won. And I wrote, totally anticlimactic. And that match was just a mess. It was. I did not like this match. No. Dave liked it. I just thought it was a mess. Just a bunch of moves. And then, worst thing was, at the end, Charlotte throws her in the ring and puts her in the figure eight, which is her big finish. And Paige takes so long to submit to her devastating hold that Charlotte's arms and shoulders give out and she falls on her head. And then Paige taps. I'm like, man, what a apropos ending to this mess. A lot of problems here. He showed JoJo interviewing Ambrose earlier tonight. He repeated all the same lines. He said sometimes this is the entertainment business, but tonight's the fight business. And Roman wasn't going to pay his bill, so they had a fight. And Roman appeared, and they bump fist again. Tyler Breeze versus Dolph Ziggler. We do not watch SmackDown this week, but apparently Dolph Ziggler referred to Tyler as a lazy millennial. <laughs> Actually, this was a few weeks ago. This was when Tyler debuted. Regardless, do they not realize most of their fans are millennials? No. Shouldn't you not be have your baby face take shots at the people your fans are? Actually, honest to God, I don't think most of their fans are millennials. They're older than that? Most of their fans are our age, or they're really little kids. The little kids not count as millennials? No, of course not. I don't know. No. Uh, anyway, Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler is now doing the cranky old man gimmick. Yes. Up to about then, 12 years old is no longer a millennial. Okay. Then they began to talk about Dolph's prestigious Survivor Series history. Last year, for example, he was the last member of Team Cena on the team that knocked the authority out of power. Did you remember that? I, I did. Do you remember one moment of that? Well, I did only because somebody emailed me today the reminder that last year Dolph had done this, and look at what a year he'd had since. I never in a hundred years would have remembered that he had been that. I do, I do remember that there was that Sting arrived in. Yes. So I remember Sting. And I guess when I thought about it, I remember Dolph had to be, someone from that team had to still be alive. And then I remember the authority was back in, what, a month? Two months? One month. This company's stupid. <laughs> show's stupid. So they had a short match. It was not very good. I it was, I, it was I, I, right. I should say it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was short and forgettable. It was all right. The most memorable thing for me here was Dolph Ziggler calling spots at the top of his lungs and at one point cursing somebody out. I'm not sure if he was. It, it, they were. It was at the finish. They were in the ropes, and he was. He loudly screamed for someone to do something, and then said, "Jesus!" And either he wanted Tyler to throw a kick, or he wanted the ref to come break them up. But they didn't do it, and so he screamed, "Jesus!" Maybe he should yell at himself for the spot where he sold his leg the whole match, and then the setup for the comeback was leaping high into the air for a drop kick, and then running and jumping at full speed for his comeback. And you wonder why nobody cares. Yeah. So Tyler kicked him in the knee and uh, hit the unprettier in one. Show was really boring at this point. And then, Taker and Kane versus two of Bray Wyatt's dudes. <laughs> now, I haven't watched SmackDown yet, and I won't. <laughs> but. That amused me. Somebody said that on SmackDown, they announced that it was going to be Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. Which means between Tuesday and today, they changed their mind. Because it was, well, first... I realize it's wrestling, but the Wyatts come out first, and they stand at ringside. And then Kane comes out, and he stands at ringside. This is a blood feud. Oh, yeah. 
Do the Wyatts attack Kane? No. The Wyatts stand there politely as the Undertaker spends five minutes doing an elaborate entrance to the ring. So, finally, after five minutes of politely allowing him to come out and do his entrance, as soon as the bell rings, Bray sends the Vintner in to just get him. Actually, this was before the bell rang. It was before the bell. He said, attack him before the bell. And the, Well, actually, the storyline was that the Vintner attacked on his own. Oh, I he, see. He, he disobeyed Bray's orders. I see. He hits the ring and they kill him. This is what we need is another Vintner babyface turn. Well, that may be what we get. Because he hit the ring, they killed him, and then JBL was sort of note, Rowan has left the arena. Yeah. He's vanished. And I thought that might key into the end because we had talked about there's no one who would possibly want to see Taker and Kane versus any two of these men again. There must be some new debut. And then the match began and it was Harper and Wyatt. And I thought, okay, Luke's in the ring wrestling, but Bray's on the apron, but it's a tease. He's going to step down and some new guy will show up. Nope. It was just Taker in game versus Harper and Wyatt. I don't know why. Vinder never returned. I don't know why I waste my time thinking of ideas. I don't either. This was their idea. It'll just be Undertaker and Kane versus Bray and Luke Harper. They will have a basic match. Undertaker and Kane will make their comeback. They will choke slam Strowman through the table, and then they will pin Luke Harper. This was an extended squash. It went probably six minutes, and Taker and Kane won for about four. All that soul eating and everything else, we got this. A match. Yeah, what happened to that army of druids and sheep masks? I guess Taker and Kane did kill them. Yeah. Yeah, bad, bad example. All I know is at one point, they were talking about Taker and Kane's career, and JBL said if these two men had just stuck as a tag team, they'd been one of the great teams of all time. They'd be up there with the Road Warriors, or Hanson and Brody. Or the powers of pain. <laughs> hey, don't. Now listen, I know that we've been watching The Barbarian on Nitro lately and saying, holy crap, that guy was great. Do you remember the other half of the powers of pain? Well, you know, the warlord. It was the warlord. Not a Hall of Famer. In fact, are we sure the warlord is not Braun Strowman? <laughs> I'm pretty sure the warlord is not Braun Strowman. They have a lot in common. Warlord was way better than Braun Strowman. <laughs> So he did at one point, Strowman did, throw Kane across the announce desk, and Taker went to confront him, and Strowman said, ha, 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 about that scary. Anyway, yeah, eventually they uh, chokeslammed Bray and Luke, and they tombstoned Luke and pinned him. It was a squash match. Then they took a long time making their exit. This is probably a 20-minute segment with about, what did I say, six minutes of wrestling? Yeah. Cool. Something like that. I got nothing more to say. They cool. plugged Breaking Ground. Talked about Mojo Raleigh. Cole says, King, what do you know about Mojo Raleigh? And Lawler says, well, I know he's I know he's a lunatic, and he loves to get hyped. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, King is not paying attention. Hey, that's his gimmick. No, his gimmick is I don't get hyped. I stay hyped. I stay hyped. Sure. And they aired that, by the way, 15 seconds before Lawler spoke. Well, at least Lawler knew that he was hyped. I don't know. Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose in the tournament finals. Dean, I believe, for the first time in his WWE career, wrestled shirtless. He had a probably crowd, I, I would say, about two to one in Dean's favor. I think Dean was better off in that wife beater. He's not a bodybuilder. He's, no, he is. But he's a natural bodybuilder. In this environment. Yeah. Yeah. He was just skinny. He is just a skinny guy. So, yeah, they had a seven-minute main event. It was it was good. Actually, you know what? It, you know what? This is a good match. It was it was a good match. You want to know why? It was two guys who hadn't wrestled before, and the fans were super into it. That helped. They they chanted for Dean. They chanted for Roman, both good and bad. They did do some kicking out of finishers. Not a ton of it, though, because they only had seven minutes. Yeah, fans were into every near fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, Dean was punching him in the corner. He jumped down to run across the ring to pop out of that corner with something, but when he turned around, Roman speared him to death and pinned him. That's it. Roman Reigns, new WWE champion. That's right. So he collapses with the belt. I believe this man was legit weeping. He was. Over the next 10 to 15 minutes. Dean recovers. He embraces his friend. They bump fists, and Dean disappears. What a friend, by the way, now that I think about it. Left him hanging out there? Yeah, where was he when Sheamus came out? I don't know. So, Triple H, who did not want Roman to win, nonetheless had Pyro and uh, 
confetti ready to go off. Ballyhoo. Pyro and Ballyhoo, yeah. All that's going off. Roman's moved to tears. And Hunter comes out. He is applauding. He wants to cheer Roman Reigns. He gets the ring. He's applauding more. He raises Roman's hand. Roman is confused. Hunter applauds more, and he offers a handshake. Roman turns his back on him, looks at the belt, ponders the world for a while, and then spears Hunter to death. What a dick. <laughs> well, I don't know. So he turns around, and Seamus bro kicks him and immediately cashes in. Confetti is still falling as they're doing this match. That made it special. It actually did. <laughs> Seamus made a cover. Roman kicked out. And then Roman avoided one bro kick, but Seamus got him on the second try to pin him and win the match and the championship. And yes, Seamus is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Seamus wins the title. Hunter goes over, shakes his hand. They hug. They embrace. Seamus is the new guy in the authority. Seamus. Can I repeat that for the world? The new man in the authority is Shame Us. So they leave. The, the, the pay-per-view officially ends with Seamus' music playing. They leave together, and the camera is focused on Roman Reigns coming to in the middle of the ring, lying in a pool of confetti. Screen goes to black, but on the network at least, then it comes back. And Roman is still in the ring. Wipes away the tears, pulls himself to his feet. Confetti is still falling. And he struggles to his feet after this ambush. He gets up, and the people of Atlanta all booed him. This was not split, everyone. Everyone in Atlanta hated Roman Reigns. Apparently angry at him for losing to Sheamus and putting Sheamus over. Tears streaming down the man's face. Yes. And he is booed out of the building. And as he goes up the aisle, he looks back at the ring longingly, and the last shots we see as he turned the corner were him tearing off the straps of his vest in frustration. So this looked exactly like, if you recall, when Christian won his first championship and then lost it to Randy Orton on SmackDown, and he uh, left the ring looking confused and, 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 and pissed off. And Same deal here. Roman is pissed off, and so apparently he is going to uh, realize now he cannot be a nice guy and be champion, so he's going to have to play dirty. I guess. You got more out of this than I did. Yeah. I just got, man, this poor fucker. One thing after another. Now, granted, to be fair, to be fair, Roman was going to beat Seth at this show, but they may very well have had the cash-in plan for the show one way or the other. So they may have planned the whole time for Sheamus to be champion going into the winter, the wonderful winter months. Sheamus, the jolly champion. The story obviously is that this is now the second time that Roman has been screwed in a world title match by Money in the Bank. This is his new legacy. Mm. Money in the Bank fucks you every time. What a legacy. So yeah, that was the show, everybody. Survivor Series. I guess we'll find out what happens tomorrow.